Good morning. Welcome to episode three of Tea, Coffee, and Torah. This morning, I wanted to share with you some thoughts on a, a comment that I often get, and that is that religious people have no business talking politics. And the worst thing you can ever do is talk politics and religion. Uh, you know, I do quite a bit of study. Um, I deal with a lot of scholarship. And they say the last thing that you want to do is mix that with anything that is applicable today. Just keep it all theoretical, keep it in the past, and we're good. But I find that the divine law is a call to action. It is a plan meant to be implemented. And when I read through the Torah, everything there is political or has political implications. For instance, um, the idea that leaders are held to a stronger sense of accountability and when they cr commit a crime, their penalties are five times above the average citizen, sometimes even more. Um, and you find this based on the value of the uh, penalty that they were supposed to pay. That's number one. Number two, there's stipulations regarding penalties for crimes like theft or murder or all of these things. All of these are political issues. The other issue that you have in scripture are limits of power of government. So to try to separate politics and religion, we do ourselves a huge disservice. And we think that just because religion has been applied with a lot of baggage in the past and just because it has been applied where it has led to tyranny that that will always be the end result i think that we miss the boat so i want to just share some ideas with you this morning and i would love to have your input below i would love to have your comments uh you know i had a lot of response to my previous um tea uh, coffee and torah where i talked about each of us having the ability to become a messiah rather than waiting for some epic hero to deliver us how about we just all take hold of that divine plan and we do it ourselves and what i find is that when we do that we unleash a power and a capability that hasn't been seen for a long time as I survey the world today, I just see Judeo-Christianity being absolutely impotent, having no power of voice, of reason, or really tackling the issues that are confronting us today. Uh, I'd like to share something with you from Proverbs. It says, to reject the law is to elevate the wicked. To obey the law is to fight them. This is Proverbs 28.4. And this is such a powerful voice uh, idea to me. In fact, it's, it's so powerful that my forthcoming book, Does Jesus Exist? I actually build on this verse throughout the book. Um, and you might be surprised where Jesus stands on his observance and support of the law. I think both Christians and Jews are going to be um, having to re -go, go back to the text and um, question a few things. So what I find and, and if it's dark here today, it's because we are beginning to get the outer bands of Debbie. No rain yet, but it's definitely overcast here. So hopefully the, the rain will hold out. But what I find is that we grow weaker and weaker because we are unwilling to talk about our issues. The very things that divide us, we just do the Southern thing and sweep them under the rug. We are afraid that if we enter into an open dialogue, that we will... All, that it will lead to fracture rather than unity. And I, th I think it really comes from where we, what our motivation is. If we stick with the text and we are willing to allow solar scriptura, you know, the text itself to determine the direction that we go, it unleashes unlimited possibilities that can unite us in every way. I'd like to kind of share a, an example that I've um, that I faced in my own life. I have a friend who has sexual abuse in her family, and this, the allegations came forth when the the woman was an adult. The family refuses to address it. They refuse to talk about it, and there's a lot of hard feelings. There's strife, constant infighting. Um, they don't get along, and the family has fractured. 
And in many ways, you know, it may not be that severe or we may not think it's that severe within our churches and our synagogues. But from my vantage point, I see that it's exactly the same. We have a direct confrontation to everything that is sacred and holy within the scriptures that is being perpetrated upon us in Western societies by our government. And that is allowed to happen because we stay silent. And are the voice that we do have, it doesn't mean anything. It's absolutely impotent. So how do we go from this place of silence where any thought, any idea that we have that we may share with our constituents, that we may share with our elected representatives, where it's just swept under the rug and not taken into account, how do we go from that state to where we are a live, vibrant society, where we are strong and where we are united as one people? So I want to share again this verse with you, and I encourage you to meditate on it. To reject the law is to elevate the wicked. To obey the law is to fight them. So how do we fight our enemies? And I do call them enemies because the policies that are um, being perpetrated on us today are a direct affront to everything that is sacred and holy in divine law. And it makes us weak. Um, and that I believe is, you know, I, I don't know how many of you read Sun Tzu or read different historical document, documents, maybe Machiavelli, the prince. But what you find in each of those is that there are strategies for subjugating a people. And today, our government is following those strategies. And I'm, when I say our government, it's all of Western society because they profit from it. And none of us have the strength, because we're just one person, to hold them accountable. And it's going to stay this way as long as we remain one of us. But there's something that they know. When we take hold of a strategy of a call to action that all of us can agree upon, game over. Because we become strong and united as a people. And, you know, it really comes down to the fact that we have to ag agree on some basic, basic principles in order to move forward. The division and strife that we have among ourselves um, you know, I know a lot of us think that it occurred because of sin. Um, but, you know, sin itself is a very open-ended concept, both within Judaism and Christianity. Um, th there are actually black and white definitions, but what I found when I talk with people about those black and white definitions, they say, oh, no, that's not what it really means. Yes, the text says that, but that's not what it means. So we're going to talk about some of those ideas because... Um, and that's over the course of this series because this should really be about getting us back on the right, right path where there is strength and unity. And our, our present state really didn't come because we departed from divine law. I think we, the fact is we missed the fact that we departed from divine law because we couldn't reconcile our differences regarding what is applicable regarding divine law. Is it just the Ten Commandments? What about the the teachings, the the statutes in the law, or rather the um, the different regulations within the law that state you shouldn't take bribes, that have a moral um, regulation, a, a code of morality regarding human relationships? Are those something that are no longer valid today? What I find is that each religion picks and chooses those parts of the law they're going to accept as applicable. Um, you know, this is considered uh, relevant. This is considered um, something that is okay for today and something that can function for society, while something else is considered uh, out of date. We've progressed beyond that. But have we? So, again, these are ideas that we're going to discuss. You know, I don't know how many of you saw the recent interview with... Um, Jordan Peterson and Elon Musk, but Peterson um, pointed out that in the face of losing a, an ideology that united that unites us, we sort of give up. We because we can't agree, we st we resort to hedonism, which is basically the um, pursuit of all of our own lusts, all of our own desires. 
And that it only furthers the fracture, uh, or fracture of society. So I want to turn the tables around and encourage a discussion of ideas, ideas based on sola scriptura. This is the idea that the written text, rather than, you know, these 2,500 years of, uh, whether it's preachers, teachers, rabbis, sages, let's cut through it. Let's just go back to the beginning. Let's just start at the beginning and work our way through. And I think we're going to find a lot of ideas that are relevant for today. Even though they're re written anciently, I think we're going to find that we can embrace them and that they enlighten our path. So, and along this way, there's going to be a lot of call to actions where each of us, I, I, I hope to maybe bring out from the text ways in which each of us can be messiahs today and that unity that each of us taking upon the law to actually do it, we bring about the era of salvation that is promised in scripture and a unity whereby we cannot be divided. So, and that's for today for tea, coffee, and Torah. I invite you to join me next time. And next time, I do hope next week to be getting on to a Monday, Wednesday, Friday schedule. And I hope to be again around um, eight thirty, well, nine o'clock uh, Eastern time, which would be about eight o'clock Central time. So join me next time. Y'all have a great day. Bye bye.